everyone and welcome to Sunday Slow Stitching with Rita. Um, I'm working on this um, pouch that I'm making with this panel from a French Journal and um, it's going to be folded over something like that but um, we have to um, actually make make a um, bag first. Um, so I thought I'd show you some of that part and then we'll move on. I didn't get a chance to get it all stitched, stitched uh, in, so I'm hoping I can do it while the bag is closed to a certain degree. I mean, um, this is the bottom section and then so if I close these sides up, I think I can still reach in here and still stitch and if I can't I'll just have to undo it and stitch it and then put it back together maybe maybe I'll do that before I actually Sunday comes because today is only Wednesday okay so now this fabric here because I didn't have anything for backing um, for the French general so um, I needed another fabric that I thought would match somewhat to it which um you know i had three or four picked out but this is about the closest color i could i could find and this is called Ossenberg, which i love Ossenberg anyway if you've never had it or bought it it's um very primitive looking it's um kind of an open wavy kind of fabric i don't know if you can see it through here in my hand um yeah, and it's very inexpensive. Um, I'm not sure what I paid per yard, but it's usually uh, less than any other kind of fabrics that you would buy, like maybe close to the muslin, a muslin price. Okay, so I'm going to set this down here. Oh, excuse me. It's getting afternoon. I'm already tired. I haven't done anything. <laughs> okay, I want to leave this French general, and I'm I'm going to stitch all around uh, the perimeter of this also um, with red. And as you can tell, I have added some pink into this um, mix of, of embroidery because there, there's a ten, tint of pink in this, this flower here. So I've added pink in this section here, up over here. I did these dash lines in pink and these lines here in pink and then it'll have red and then I'm going to do these little flower buds on here in pink uh, French knots in pink and then this uh, French knot down here in pink so I don't know how much more pink I'll use but it was kind of I just wanted to work with that whole color uh, theme okay so here I'm going to fold this uh, and to match the edges of this. Now I'm going to go press this to match it, but I want you to see how I'm planning to do that. And then I wonder, do I want to do a running stitch? I, I have already uh, stitched this under but I could do a whip stitch on this side or I know I could do a um, 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 a blanket stitch which might look nice hmm. yeah so that I think that'd be cute a blanket stitch okay so all I'm gonna do is stop here uh, go press this to fit now if you wanted to I would you could do you could take a ruler I just ripped this um, so it was bigger than what I was stitching on and I'm just gonna take my friction pan and I'm just going to go along this edge. Let's see if it even. Okay. And I'll do it along this edge. That way. 
this fabric is goes both ways. It's you know, there's no front and back just to it. So if you do have a front and back, you may want to do something on the back where you're going to fold it over. But when you buy this, if you get the French General and it, it is on, this panel is on one, two, three stitch. My friend just uh, found it. And, um, well, I think, and there's a blue one too. I don't know if there's red and blue, but I know there is blue or it was a few days ago. Um, I should have stitched, closed that off when I was stitching, but I wanted to get this in, get it working on. Um, but you get a whole big panel when you purchase this. It's only 12 something. And um, I, I would say it's, a half yard or maybe a yard uh, of panel and there's other things to stitch so if you bought that you could use it for the back the reason I only have this part is because my friend gave it to me she was gonna use the other parts for something she was making so um, yeah it it might be a good investment um, you know to do that and you could make a whole um, a layout you know with the other designs I do have some of the border but I don't think I'll use it here okay so hold on I will be back I'm gonna go iron this and then we can do some stitching there okay so I have um, finished this um, front of this little bag and um, I stitched everything I could uh, find a stitch on there and then I also put my initials here in uh, 2024. Uh, I put this a little bit in green because it kind of looked like stems coming out of that flower. And then I just embellished this, uh, these leaves a little bit. So anyway, I, I'm, I'm liking the way it's going to look. So when it folds down, it'll look something like this. And I, I have this pucker right here and I've never had that happen before. So I don't know why why it's uh, puckering. I used a hoop to stitch it. So anyways, um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put it on a backing because this one um, doesn't, is just a piece of fabric and it doesn't have backing on it. And I'm making a bag, so we need it to uh, be backed. So this side here... Um, will be left open let me turn it this way because I don't know why that just makes me feel nope this way okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just do a running stitch along here here and here and I'm going to leave this part um, open because I am gonna turn this inside out and then I'm going to be putting a bag another bag the same size inside this bag and I'm going to use this red um, ticking fabric I coffee dyed it let's see I guess I folded it I guess this is coffee dyed it's not very um, strong but it's enough I don't know if you can tell the difference there there's enough uh, that it just looks vintage not um, bright white like it was so that I will cut to use for the inside of the pouch okay so here I'm going to and you know everybody who does this is probably has a different way uh, to do things I mean we all have our own way so this is the end I'm going to leave open. So I'm just going to put some pins in here to keep it in place. And the only reason I didn't cut this completely down to size is because I know that um, this will move as I sew. I don't know if that happens to you guys. In this way, I don't have to worry about having it too 
one the top or the lining or the inside I mean the back um, normally I don't have to do this kind of thing I don't think I don't know I've never done one of these before so it's new new to me okay so that puts um, and then I'll just kind of get started and show you what I thought I would do. I'm going to use, um, this is a 12 weight pearl cotton. And um, I want to make uh, smaller stitches. Now, you might think that this isn't going to hold, but when I do the inside part, I'm going to do it on the sewing machine. So I'm going to start here. So I'll just like kind of sneak into this corner, put that down inside, and then just come back up and down. Am I in camera? Hopefully. I moved to my other camera, my other desk because the, I don't know, the other one, it, it, there's just not enough light in there. So I hope I'm getting these close enough together that, and I did put right sides, well, this doesn't have right or wrong, but I did put um, the right side facing down because when I turn it inside out, this seam will be on the inside, I think. It's gonna work. I was gonna blanket stitch um, around the outside edge, which I might still do it after I get this part of the bag done for any kind of decoration, but it already has that um, the dash embroidery around so okay I'm just gonna check something here while I'm before I stitch too far so see that'll be the outside let's see I was kind of hoping that the French general would show it's gonna be very barely showing Let's see, I think when I press it out, it'll show enough. And like I said, I might go back and do um, another stitch along that edge, even if it's just another running stitch, maybe, which will be, make it even stronger. But I don't think I have to worry about it because I'm going to do the inner part with uh, a sew machine. You don't have to. You can do it all with this type of stitch. But I thought I might as well just, if you have a sew machine, you might want to have a stronger, stronger fit. Okay. And then when I make the, in, the inside lining part, I'll probably cut it the same size but when I stitch it it'll be a quarter of an inch smaller so that should probably come out just right I hope come on <laughs> hands in the way of my needle without stabbing myself there we go okay all right, I'm going to stop here. See, I originally, I think in the first part of the video, I was going to lay this folded down inside, and then I was going to whip stitch it closed. But I thought that this would not, I thought it would be too bulky maybe right there. So I changed my mind to do it that way. So now I'm going to do it this way, and then I'll just trim this along here, depending on 
That way, if it moves, I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so I'll be back when I get this all done. Um, then we'll have to measure this up to make sure it's going to fit inside. And then I thought about what I'm going to do for a closure if I want to put a closure. Um, I don't know if it will need one or not, but we'll do that when we come to it because I'm not going to stitch any of this closed until the very end so we can add in a ribbon or or anything um, button on the outside or whatever to use as a closure okay so I will see you in a little bit okay so I have all this uh, sewn around I did just a running stitch uh, with a uh, cream color um, thread 12 weight pearl cotton and um, then I trimmed off the excess Ossenberg fabric that I used for the back and then I did take my pinking shears and pink the edges because it is kind of a ravelly type of fabric but um, I think it'll be okay so then um, I'm, I turned it inside out already and pressed it so you guys could see otherwise I would have to stop and start again okay so and the, these corners didn't like come out as good as I would have liked them but it's just the bulk of this piece okay so then this is going to flip over like so but um, this will be covered so okay so next we need the um, inside panel so I'm going to measure this um, and we're gonna see if we can get a piece of, we're gonna need two pieces of fabric am I doing something wrong here come on <laughs> okay Let's move that to the side right now okay so this measures I've got a tape measure right here on, your, on my desk so you can't see it it's um, I would say 14 and a half by I think maybe 10 and a half okay so I was gonna write it down because I'll forget it in a matter of seconds do I have a piece of paper? <laughs> 14 and a half by 10 and a half, I think I said. I hope. See, I can't remember. All right, so we need a, two pieces of this. And I'm trying to, actually, I can see the coffee dye better on the back side than I can the front side. Okay, that side has been ripped so that one I know is straight so let's do this one going this way ten and a half so I'm just gonna put it on my ruler down here and ten and a half is right there Oh, I want it more than ten and a half. I'm sorry. I want um, eleven because I need actually I need an extra quarter of an inch on each side, so that would be a half inch. So yeah, I'll go eleven. Oops, enough room to work here. So that would be 11 by 14 and a half, which would be um, 15. It doesn't really matter up here, um, the height, because I can adjust it. So I'm gonna go 16, because that way I don't have to 
Don't worry if I'm doing it the right way. It doesn't seem to want to rip this in this direction. It's always tougher to rip one side than the other. Okay, so there's that piece. And I need another piece. I thought I had my phone on silent. I always have to turn it on silent, turn it off, you know, constantly. Okay, I'm doing this fabric this way because I want to um, get this coffee dye part. I didn't coffee dye the whole thing. I should have. Or tea dye. I don't coffee dye it. I tea dyed it. Um, so, ten and a half. So I want it to be eleven. Okay. I think we went fifteen on this side. Fifteen. I love ripping fabric. You know, years ago, my mom would rip fabric all the time, and I'd be like, why does she do that? Why does she just cut it like everybody who's <laughs> sewing those days cut? And uh, then all of a sudden, you know, you get to the point where you realize that ripping it is going to give you straight fabric. I remember... Um, trying to so I I was in home ec for years it's like the only thing I did when I was in school was get to home ec but um, um, I was going to say something about it now I lost my train of thought because I'm thinking okay do I have enough inches alright so this is really kind of a tight fit maybe I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it. I think it'll all work out in the end. Okay, so these are going to go back to back. Good, pretty sides together. Oh, I should have. I hope I didn't add that into my. should have pressed this darn it well you know what I'm well that's weird wait a second 15 no that's 16 well it doesn't really matter except I want the opening to be up here, okay. I just want the opening to have the coffee dyed look. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew along here, quarter of an inch here and here, and just leave this open. And then when we slip it inside, we'll be able to turn this down inside. And then we'll be able to do a um, running stitch or, or blanket stitch or whatever around the, the top part. Okay, so I'm going to put you on hold and um, on pause and I'll sew this and I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, okay. I was wondering if my camera was going or not. Um, so I've sewed around uh, this. I trimmed the edges off so it would be easier to fit inside of here. So this is your inside part, which is going to be the inside of your bag. So you take this section and we're going to put it inside of this one that is on the right side. So it's the wrong sides together. Okay, and hopefully they'll fit, you know, reasonably enough. Just have to keep make sure you get it down into um, into the bottom, and you can just feel it if it's 
you know, see my, well, that one I could probably move over a little bit. You can't see it or feel it, but you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so let me just like, yeah, just kind of push it down in there. Okay, so on this side, we already have an edge that's working. So the first thing I'm going to do is come to this edge and this edge, and I'm just leaving everything like that um, at this point. I want to make sure that um, that it's all going to fit side by side. See, so it might be a, well, it's not bad. I was going to say it might be a little bit off, but that's all I, the only part I'm concerned about. Making sure that those corner, those two sides meet those two sides. Okay. So now we're going to, let's do this front first. Now we're going to take this piece and I'm going to fold it in. And you know, this is, I have to say, this is kind of a makeshift thing. You know, there's no right or wrong way to do it. You just kind of, just from your own knowledge of how you would put something together is what I'm using. And uh, I don't know that that's right or wrong, but I hope this is right because now I'm worried that Oh, wait a second here. I know this wasn't too... Hmm. Now I'm worried. Maybe I did it wrong. Okay. This one is going to go down the side of here. Well, maybe it's okay. Just didn't have. This back part down yet. And if you, you know, if I was to do it exactly right, I would have cut these nice and even. <laughs> but I kind of like this about slow stitching is, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect at all. See right here, it's going to be a little wonky, but I don't know exactly why that is. But it's it's for my own use, so I'm not going to sell it. Especially if I can't even make it properly. <laughs> I'm not going to sell it. Okay. So, so this is all going to get stitched around here, and then when we put the bag over, you're going to have this little pouchy thing here, but you're going to fill up the inside of the bag. So I, I will go and stitch all this. Um, I don't know if I want to do... Um, I'm trying to think what would look best. Maybe just a running stitch rather than a blanket. Only because I think the blanket stitch would conflict with the stripes that are on here. Because then if the goes crooked or something, it's going to be very noticeable. 
So if I do a running stitch, actually I could do it from this side and balance it out using these lines, then that might give it a little bit of, let's, do I have my red thread? Or didn't I bring that in here? Is a project bag I made with one of my slow stitch panels when I just used to make them just well they're the size that will fit a journal cover but if I don't have a journal cover to use if I don't need it for that I just used it for another pouch because I tell you these are so handy to have different projects I mean this this would hold a whole entire project for cross stitch, probably. Okay, so the other other thing, the only other thing is, do I want to put a button like right in there and a tie, you know, that it can wrap around? Because you may have your pouch, it may be bigger. I mean, you may not. Like if you put a whole magazine inside here, I don't have one, but let's just say, oh, that's cutting board. But let's say you were gonna put something like a cutting board, a magazine, or, you know, a stitching pattern or something. So that one would come over this far. But if you put a magazine in there and a, embroidery hoop and your threads um, then your button would be way down here your button would be here so you just have to make sure that the tie is long enough so let's say this only flips over to here which I don't know yeah you probably flip it over more so I could sew in a ribbon And then I would put a button, and then the button I could just wrap, wrap the ribbon around it. Um, or I could sew on a button here, and then the ribbon can come around. I can tie the ribbon underneath and then the ribbon can come around and wrap around it all the way around it. I don't think I have... That's uh, pretty bright. I mean, not bright, but kind of a dark red, actually. I'm not sure, but you know what? I don't need to do it right now because I really need to see what kind of project or what kind of things I'm going to put in here. So I'm just going to take this out. It's kind of hard to stitch with that in it. Um, so I'm just, I'll just start on like one edge here. Let's just see what what I can do. I guess I can go through here. I'm going to stitch as close up there as I can, I think. So I'm just going to go in here. And make sure the knot's down here inside. Of course, it's not going to stay there. So, if I go like this and come up my first stitch is crooked. <laughs> Do I want to take it out? No. It's a little thick in here.
You know what, I can't, I don't want it to be that, well, I guess it's okay. I was going to say, I didn't want it that far away from the edge, but it, that doesn't look right. I want the white parts. Taking this out because I need it to be higher. So I'm not going to do all of this on camera. I will go in and sew it in my chair. So I don't know how much time I have. This actually took me a long time. Uh, I worked on it a lot every day, either morning or evenings. But I do love my cross stitch too, so I work on that a little bit every every day. And then during the day, I'm working on journals. I'm at work all the time. If you want to call it work sometimes it's like work but most of the time it's a lot of fun and the one thing I like about any of my hobbies well except cross stitch of course you've got to have it right <laughs> I mean you can fudge a little bit on some designs but most of them if you mess up, then you're, and you keep going, and it was messed up, somewhere around the corner, you're going to run into each other, or not run into each other, actually, because you'll be off. That's why I don't like designs with borders, because I always mess up the border. All right, well, I guess that's good enough there to show you how I'm planning to do that. So this is how it will look here at this point. It's cute. I mean, you could actually, after you finished, you could actually even put it up this way a little bit and just have that come up with a different... It's almost like a Christmas stocking, but I'm going to do it the way I had it planned because I want to be able to see that red kind of popping out. See what I mean? I want that to show when you go to open the bag. All right, so I'm just going to set this off to the side and I'll go finish stitching this and give it a little bit of a press. See if anything is <clears throat> messed up. Like I said, I didn't get the corners very well, but I hand stitched it, so I can't really work at it too much, or it's gonna, it might pop loose. So, all right, guys, thanks um, for watching. I'll be back in a second. Okay, I would say that the pouch is finished. Um, this, I might have used maybe this um, and put 
a pocket across here, something like a zipper pocket would have been cute. You know what? I have one in here. I had some cross stitch put in there so I could see how things would fit. But I, I have like this zipper bag. And if I had thought about it, I could have sewed, not with this stuff in it, but let's see. I could have um, like sewed this or tacked it like on this part of the bag. And then when you flip it over, you would have a little bag, not necessarily with the plastic in it, but that's a thought if you wanted to add another element to it. Um, this is a piece I'm working on very slowly. It's very tiny and it's, I don't, it's not hard. It's just time consuming. So anyway, put all that back in there. This is the pattern. It's Plum Street Sampler. And I was doing it for the patriotic time of the year, but I tell you that time is just flying by. Okay, so um, let me show you what else. Um, so that fits in there, like with the a, you know a pouch and your pattern and your scissors and all that can fit in there if you wanted uh, the bag for that. Also, um, I'm thinking not to do so much like this stitching. But just slow stitching, um, you know, design on it. And then using that for a journal. This is a journal of mine where I wrote in. And I, I love this because these are the kind of journals that I make. And they're just, there's just so much you can, all the little things you can write in, in here. So this journal is about average size and this one fits in here nicely so let's say you had a uh, you could put an iPad in here you could put a journal in here you could put your Bible in here to store your Bible or your uh, vintage uh, grandparents Bible your mom and dad's whatever kind of thing you want to cherish you could store in something like this and actually display it which I think is cool and it just will keep all the dust and everything off of your uh, I'm just gonna leave that in for a second that will keep all the dust and all that kind of thing off of your piece of uh, off of whatever you put in here uh, you could put a christening dress um, I don't know <laughs> it's just so cute I love it so I was going to put a button and I was gonna put the button like here not that one. Maybe this. These are handmade. I did on one of my videos if you want to see how to make handmade buttons. Um, Roxy from Roxy's Creation. I mean, Rachel from Roxy's Creation did this on her channel. And I just um, kind of went along with her guidance and made my own. I think they turned out pretty cute. This is just paper, that paper clay you buy. It's very inexpensive. But I don't know. I didn't know where to sew it. And then I didn't know how I was going to close it. I didn't want a rubber band or any of that kind of thing. So I thought I would just wrap some of this um, seam binding. It's crinkled up. And uh, you can crinkle this up yourself by just um, dipping it in water and crunch it all up and let it dry. And then it'll be all crinkly. So um, I think that's kind of a nice way to close it. I have uh, that one, the red one, and then I pulled out some pink sari silk that I really like too, because I added that, I can't even tie, <laughs> I added that peach, I'm trying to hurry. I don't want this to be so long. I can move that down too so that your bow is closer to the bottom or you could do it closer to the top depending on what your design is and then you take this off and you throw it in your in your pouch uh, when you um, don't need it it'll just be right there okay so I guess that is it for this I'm um, thinking um, the other thing I was going to share is I made um, this cross stitch I just finished it it was <laughs> for February uh, what is it June end of June anyway um, so I stuffed it and I don't know if if you guys do cross stitch or not uh, who's watching but 
um, I filled it with um, poly, a polyfill, but the polyfill I use is from a pillow, uh, from a bed pillow. So the bed pillow I have is um, firm, and what that does is this makes a very nice, tight, um, no lump, see there's no lumps, uh, pillow. And uh, then I, this is the other trick that I have just recently learned, where you take your fabric that you're going to use for the back. I don't know if I have a piece. Let me see. I don't know if this interests you or not, but yeah, there might be somebody out there. So what you do is you take and you, um, let me see. I think you do it this way. Oof. I only did it a couple days ago. You'd think I'd remember. Yeah, I think you do it wrong side out. So you put the right sides together, but you leave it on the fold. And then you just sew a nice little tiny stitch. Well, no, you use a quarter inch stitch because you want a quarter inch to go under like that. So you stitch along and then like on a number two on your sew machine, then you go to your basting stitch and you go this far and leave that basting stitch in there. Uh, then you go back to your normal stitching. So you back stitch here and here, here and here. Then after you're done and you open this up, all these are going to be match right where they were. You're not, you, I mean, you might lose a little bit, but not much. So in other words, trying to match up your, uh, if you had a stripe like this one here, um, I was able to match it up to exactly the design uh, that it, it um, that it was. It, it just makes it easier. A lot of people will sew this all up and then they'll they'll cut it. And that's what I used to do for years. I would cut it, then I'd whip stitch it back and put a label over the top. You can do that. It's not that hard to do. But I kind of like this whole finishing thing where it looks nice and neat. And I thought I would try it on camera to see if I can't, um, let me see if I have a, a small needle. You kind of need a, come on. I hate it when the needles go all the way down in this. Um, yeah, you have to kind of have a small needle because uh, that's kind of small, not that small. And this is my DMC thread that is very fine. It's 50 weight, but it's a fine thread. It says machine embroidery thread, but it's 50 weight. I don't get that. Okay, I hope I can do this right. Can't even see my needle there, it is. So I may not bore you with the whole thing, but I'm gonna do a ladder stitch. And that, okay, so now I'm gonna come back about a eighth of an inch past where the opening is and then put my thread in there. Now I'm also going to, hold on. A little tight to do that but I'm going to see if I can't clip this because it will be easier okay so now we've got that now we're going to go back in and we're going to go right down the fold on inside of the fold <sighs> why is there always knots I tell you I don't think they make stuff as good at the fibers as good as they used to Okay, so then you're going to come straight across and go into this fold here and come out. You can do very tiny stitches if you want. And then you come across, straight across into this fold and come out. I hope you can see me. And then you come across this fold 
tiny stitch. These are becoming tiny for me because I'm not, I, didn't, I can't stitch those tiny things anymore. And it's not just eyesight, it's your hands. So that's probably going to be it. All right, then you would just pull on this. And as you pull on it, it brings all your um, seam together. It's almost seamless. You can't even see it. Well, you can because see here, if you look at this, I left too big of a gap there. So I'm going to stop here because I have to rip that out because I need to go back and make sure that I have uh, even stitches. And, um, you know, you it's easy to do. If you can clamp these together, the better off you are. And sometimes you can actually, you know, put a, a straight pan in if that's um, easier. But anyway, you go across and you, and the, and the seam is disappear. It disappears. <laughs> I think that's so cool. So, just a little tip for today. Now, I also want to say I'm probably going to miss a couple weeks of uh, Sunday stitching because I'm actually going to be missing some time during the week too. But I have family coming, uh, then my sister's coming, then my granddaughter's coming. So July is just going to be really a, a big uh, w month for me for family and vacations and that kind of thing. So um, I just wanted to let you know so you won't. You know, if I'm not there, I'm okay. I just uh, <laughs> needed to take a break here. So anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I I enjoyed making it, and I, I like to do it again uh, just as a regular slow stitch project. And um, I think the next thing I'm going to use it, or do is um, the fabric that I bought at the quilt show, that real bright yellows and reds and blues and those colors which I love that combination uh, I want to make a table mat type thing for my um, uh, what do you call it a bar in my kitchen you know the table in the middle of the kitchen uh, I've always had one there and the one I had it just got so I washed it so many times and it was just it was a little quilted one and it just finally said goodbye so I had to get rid of it uh, I didn't get rid of it but I I put it away but it's it's not really good enough to use anymore so those other colors will go nice in my kitchen all right so thank you guys for watching thanks for subscribing thanks for comments and all of that I really really do appreciate you and um, I hope you'll come back and see me again real soon thank you bye